Eddie Lyons Rec Boats versus the Day Tour line. What's the difference? If you see yourself paddling across lakes, working with currents, you're gonna be really happy upgrading a few extra bucks and getting all those extra tools you, that you really need to mitigate the wind and the current. Having the extra features might be more beneficial, but if you're gonna be lifting things by yourself all the time, well, then maybe the lightweight option is better for you. They're just so light and easy to get into the water and in and out of a car. A great choice if you're paddling within eyesight of the shoreline or your beach site. Around here in Central Oregon, it's a lot of high alpine lakes and slow moving rivers, and I can have a good time in any of these kayaks. Any Lines Wreck Boats have sea kayak DNA. Adjustable foot braces, padded thighs and hips, Dual density foam with channeled seat and backrest. Makes a difference between sitting in a boat and wearing a kayak. Dual bulkheads and hatches on a solid deck with shock cords and perimeter lines. Tractable carry handles. Aggressive cockpit combing. And proper draining. They have a nice firm stern. It's really gonna aid tracking, but along with a cockpit that's set slightly back from center. Aided by the shallow V-hole, also providing legroom and inviting the paddler to start playing with edged turns. Yeah, beautiful. That was nice. the best one yet, I think. Taking a page out of the Sitka line, an attempt to overly simplify our recreation line, think of them all based off of our 12-foot Skylark. Our best seller, the size and fit of a recreational kayak, with the efficiency usually found in longer boats. If that's our standard, then it's simplified like this. Short, standard, long, narrow, wide, and extra large. They all have their individual characteristics, but that's an easy way of simplifying it. Let's break it down a little bit that way. If you're looking for the right tool for a quick, short paddle, the Equinox Skylark and Rio are for you. The Rio is designed for the small to medium-sized paddler, looking for a recreational kayak with spirited performance. Comes complete with thigh braces and the nimble handling of a hull that is inspired by our longer touring kayaks. This is a great kayak for experienced paddlers that want to go lighter and shorter, yet still a kayak that a beginner will enjoy and be able to grow into as their skills progress. Or the missing link between our touring models and the rec line, the Equinox, with more efficient glide to the water, extra legroom, and gear capacity. Even though there's some obvious differences between the Equinox and the Sitkas, it is kind of the missing link, if you will. First and foremost, it's the only boat on the rec line that has an adjustable seat for adjusting for wind management and also the ovalized hatch. So you can still get away with some weekend getaways and uh, have a little bit more option. While I have these three boats together, the Skylark, the Equinox, and the Rio, let's go through a few differences on these. First off, the Skylark and the Rio are basically the same length, 12 foot and 11 foot nine. Uh, where the Equinox is a full 14 feet. Number two, you can see that the rear hatch on the Equinox is a lot longer than it is on the Rio and the Skylark. So more gear capacity in that thing. If you're putting in any uh, camping chairs, any, any coolers, any other big bags. There is a 10 pound weight swing between these three kayaks, 35 pounds, 41 pounds, and 45 pounds. If you're loading your boat by yourself all the time, you might be looking towards that Rio at 35 pounds. But if you're doing any team lifting, shouldn't have any issue moving the Skylark and the Equinox. I'm six foot two and I can technically wad up in the Rio, even though I would not recommend selling this boat to myself at 6'2". Um, it's super sporty and fit and feel. Uh, check out Ethan's video on that for a little more information on it, but it looks, uh, it just feels like a long, like a longer boat in a super small lightweight package. Even though the Rio and the Equinox both have thigh braces, they are a different cockpit combing. The Equinox and the Skylark do share the same combing. The Rio feels claustrophobic. Our standard fit in the Skylark gives you a little bit more room to the side and the hips there and uh, a little bit less claustrophobic getting in and out of it without having the thigh braces. It fits everybody. I'm 6'2", my kid can paddle on this. It's a really wide range of paddlers. So if you just don't know where to start, you start with the Skylark. Being as I am a little taller, I really appreciate the extra leg room of the All Equinox. Right. Just having longer leg length, it's just nice to have that extra space in there. And uh, the wind management of the seat being able to slide back and forth is really, really nice. The thigh braces too, I prefer having the sporty fit of that. I just like the way that feels. 
So I put the Sky 10, the Skylark, and the Equinox all right next to each other because they're all kind of built off of the Skylark chassis. The 10, the 12, and the 14 foot. Fit inside of there is very, very similar. They all have the exact same cockpit combing on them, actually. And the Equinox is only one inch narrower in the beam, just gonna make it cut through the water a little bit more efficiently. Think of it as a, as a stretched out Skylark. Two feet longer and one inch narrower. Just stretched out Skylark, that's what an Equinox is. Really made obvious by the difference in the oval hatch back there. It's just stretched. Or maybe our shortest, lightest, and most affordable kayak, the Sky 10. With front and rear bulkheads, it makes this one of the safest 10-foot recreational boats on the market. It's, this, again, the same exact cockpit combing as the Skylark, just in a 10-foot package. For somebody who really values the weight savings, for someone who's loading their vehicle on and off by themselves, or maybe storage is the biggest uh, the biggest issue with the Sky 10. You just live in an area where you don't have a big enough ceiling or a big enough garage to hold a full 12-foot kayak. I know some customers are really set on the length of the boat. 10 foot is all they can really spare. But you know, if length is the big concern, Sky 10 and the Caribbean 109 are the choices for you. Technically, the Caribbean does come in at 10 foot and nine inches, but we made it as short as we possibly could. They're awesome for small to medium sized paddlers. The deck comes complete with a ton of gear storage and plenty of leg room. The new paddle park handles keep our paddles in place. The front and rear hatches seal out water and provide dry storage and access to the inside of the boat for cleaning, maintenance, and customization. Accessorize the track for beverages and light fishing. A stable yet sophisticated hull design that lends to better tracking and encourages a slight lean for playful edged turns. Obviously a slightly different fit and feel to both of these boats. The Sky 10 is gonna be for somebody who's really set on the weight savings and having something that's a little bit sportier, maybe a little bit faster to cut along through the water. The 109 customer for somebody who really just needs to get on and off of the kayak easily. Maybe weight isn't such a big concern for them because they're gonna be team lifting it. At 40 pounds, it's still very manageable. Both of these boats are extremely fun, super sporty, easy on and off of the water. You're not gonna go wrong if you're just looking for, you know, a quick hour out and back. If having the lightest kayak is the most important to you, Eddyline offers three models under 40 pounds. Sky 10 at 32 pounds, Rio at 35, and the Sandpiper at 38 pounds. And the best part is you get a fit for everybody. Somebody who's a little bit smaller can fit into the Sky 10 and Rio. Somebody who's got longer legs, a little bit wider, can fit really comfortably into the Sandpiper. The Sandpiper is instant gratification for any paddler because of the easy entry into our largest combing and a super duper stable beam. These open cockpits are, offer the comfort of a sit on top while being lower and faster through the water. Another benefit of the Sandpiper, are you paddling with a dog or a small child? You can get two people in there or a small dog. There's not a lot of cost difference between these three models. Um, it's all about just making sure it's the right fit for your body. Making sure you're not feeling claustrophobic or uncomfortable so you can sit in your boat longer and have more fun. So that's what it's all about. Aside from the fit, there is a little bit of a performance difference between the Sky 10 Rio and Sandpiper. The Sky 10 being a little bit shorter isn't going to track as straight as the longer boats will. The Rio being long and narrow is going to cut through the water really well and offer a little bit more speed. The Sandpiper is going to offer ease of getting in and out of there. Very comfortable, relaxed fit. Easy to reach any of your accessories. If you're gonna struggle to move it, don't buy something heavy. Get something lightweight and easy to move. The 12 foot eddy line wreck boats, Rio, Skylark, and the Sandpiper, all coming in at the same price and basically the same length at 12 foot. The Rio is a little shorter at 11 foot nine, but for all intents and purposes, they're all 12 foot length. They all have a slightly different cockpit fit and feel. So the Skylark being our standard fit, let's come back here and take a better look at this. Maybe we can break it down a little better this way. Since body size is really the most important factor here, at the same price we offer three different fits. Our standard fit of the Skylark down in the middle here, our little bit narrower, sportier fit in the Rio, and a little bit wider, more comfortable, relaxed fit in the Sandpiper. There's only a six pound difference between these three kayaks. I wouldn't get too hung up on weight. They're all very easy to manage. Not bad not including the 12 foot Caribbean and our 12 foot lineup. The C12 FS, the award winning 12 foot Caribbean hull with a new deck and framed seat. Still only 45 pounds. At 45 pounds, it is the heaviest of the four here, but it's so easy to get it on and off of. And I put it right next to the Sandpiper because I find that the fit and feel of these two boats are very similar. Two very nice relaxed fits, both at 12 foot options. Obviously sitting a little bit lower in the water here, a little bit faster, lighter weight boat, a little more efficient here, a little bit higher, a little better initial stability. Obviously the 
additional uh, support of a frame seat. If you're team lifting this boat or if you're loading it out of a back of a truck or onto some wheels, it might not be such a concern to you. If you're going on top of a tall vehicle, um, maybe the sandpiper might be easier to manage. You know, I don't think you're gonna have much of a speed difference if I'm being really honest with you. I can paddle both these boats just fine for what I'm using a 12 foot kayak for. You're not gonna notice a lot of difference there. It's really about manageability and what you're comfortable getting in and out of. Um, if you want to keep the rain, the bugs off of you, you can get a skirt for the sandpiper. Um, you're always in the sun on the open seat there, which is great for using it for accessories, for fishing, or, you know, letting the sun or water come down on you. Yeah, it can be nice too, so. Now, if ease of entry, getting in and out of the kayak is the name of the game, the sandpipers are the boats for you. Having this super wide cockpit in here allows super easy entry for anybody who's got bad back or knee issues, likes the comfort of having a lot of leg space and knee issues, or maybe just gets a little claustrophobic getting inside of a kayak. You'll see that it has these foam pads you rest your knees against. I said, kind of cowboy style, you know? And then we also have uh, two different seat options for you. So if lightweight is more important for you, especially if you're loading it by yourself, frequently having this seat um, just comes out of all the rest of our wreck kayaks really comfortable cushion and foam everything drains really nice um, the seat back here is really cushiony and adjustable and height and everything if support is more important to you we do have a frame seat option there it comes right on out of the boat too so you can take it with you um, take it down for a picnic or sit by the campfire my boss Ethan has actually taken this on long distance tours he says I can fit the entire campsite in this bulkhead of capacity whereas the sandpiper 12 has a smaller hatch lower profile and narrower so what have you put inside of that hatch i put in this there's a blog entry the first time i took this thing out it was a really hot day down in california we did an overnighter and i was worried the clients wouldn't have enough water and i believe i had like five or six extra gallons in here plus all my camping gear and i had extra water up front as well this thing just swallows it up. It's one of the types of hatches where you can just put like a 25 liter dry bag just rolled up and in. And that's really difficult to do in a lot of boats. So the Sandpiper 12 versus the Sandpiper 130. Nick and I like to think about optimal paddler size. And over my 20 years of Eddie line and all the years of the Sandpiper, I find that a paddler at about 220 pounds and under is probably optimal for the Sandpiper 12. And once you get over 200 pounds in the Sandpiper 12, the paddler's stability really starts playing into the equation. So that's where the Sandpiper 130 is going to come in for a larger paddler or somebody that just wants more stability. We even make a spray skirt for these. So if you are going to get into some, some different water situations or just want to keep the bugs off you or the rain or stay a little warmer, we do make a skirt for the Sandpiper. Again, if loading by yourself, maybe here in the 12 foot, if you have a partner, maybe the 13 foot, or if you want to outfit it with some more fishing options and weight isn't such a concern, um, the 130 is the way to go. The frame seat models, the Sandpiper 130 and the Caribbean 12 frame seat. Uh, so a different fit and feel for both of these boats. Obviously a sit on top feel, but you're gonna get kind of a similar sitting position inside of the 130. Your feet kind of sit similar on the foot braces with your knees spread kind of cowboy style against those foam pads on the side of the Sandpiper 130 there. Gear capacity and gear storage on both of these is awesome. You have our largest hatch out of all of our models on the Sandpiper 130. Here in the back of the, of the Caribbean 12, you have a spot for a five gallon bucket or a milk crate, as well as storage through the entire boat from the rear hatch all the way up to that front hatch up there. You have storage underneath the deck of the boat. As with any sit on top, you are exposed more to the bugs and the water. So maybe you want to be closed off a little bit more in that Sandpiper 130. You're also going to go quite a bit faster, I think, in the Sandpiper. It is going to cut through the water a little bit better. It is longer. The whole design plays a big difference in how these boats are going to perform and feel on the water. This is a design coming from more of our sea kayak heritage on the Sandpiper 130 with a more standard gull wing style hole design in the bottom of the Caribbean to give you a little bit more initial stability and support somebody who's sitting higher up on the boat. Certainly get a lot of utility out of the Caribbean. We're getting a little bit more performance fit and feel out of that Sandpiper 130. The Caribbean series, our sit on top line. We're trading a little bit of speed for a little more stability and a higher gear capacity. And it's so easy to get on and off of these. Again, bad back or knee issues, get claustrophobic in a kayak, or if you want accessibility to your feet and on those extra gear tracks here, the deck comes complete with a ton of gear storage and plenty of leg room. The shock guards can be moved or removed. 
The front and rear hatches seal out water and provide dry storage and access to the inside of the boat for cleaning, maintenance, and customization. A spot CNC'd for aftermarket rod holders, or we can do it stock at the factory. Adjustable pedals, self-draining seats, and decks. These seats are exclusive to Eddie Line. Constructed with a solar weave tech mesh fabric for breathable, water permeable, and sunproof coziness for all of our long days on the water. Both Caribbean 12 and the 14 come with our standard seat, super soft, lightweight, clips on and off easily, adjustable, really hugs the body when you sit in there properly. I love that 12 foot, especially with the addition of the frame seat in there. Take it with you, uh, put it on the beach, take it to the campfire. And the uh, the paddle port has been really handy for me, especially when I, you know, I don't, do, I don't do a lot of fishing personally, I do a lot of photography, and it is really nice to be able to clip that down into place, snap a photo of some wildlife. Also offered on the 109 right there. I actually prefer to carry it with a paddle in there um, has a little less squish to it that way you know we got to have some flex to it so it doesn't get brittle and break on you um, easier for me to carry it when it's got a paddle in it paddle clip boom holds the paddle in place right there in this pre-shaped slot so everything on it is very intentional plus you get the addition on the on the caribbean 14 of the day hatch for any extra gear and accessories you want right away and then i store my water bottle underneath the little bungee here so if you're gonna be going longer distance maybe paddling up current to go find a fish the caribbean 14 is the way to go it's one inch narrower and two feet longer very similar to how the skylark on the equinox are you know having a little extra leg room is nice in the 14 maybe having that frame seat's more important to you on that 12 you know, being able to take it on and off is pretty nice. Saves weight for carrying it, and then again, you have it anywhere you go. All right, our long boat's under $2,000. You may have heard me say a few times I have long legs, and I like the longer length of the 14-foot Caribbean and the 14-foot Equinox. So let's break those two down. They're actually both pretty comparable in weight. It's only a five pound difference, 45 and 50 pounds. Um, just about how you're sitting in the boat. You wanna be down low, a little bit faster, more efficient for speed, um, so a little bit higher, more stable, um, really using the gear tracks and the accessory options there might be a bigger advantage to you. Both a little bit longer, better for somebody with longer leg length, bigger feet, or just need a bigger gear capacity. The Equinox is the only recreation boat that has that ovalized hatch in the back so you can get a lot of gear storage in there. C14 does have a spot for a five gallon milk bucket or a five gallon bucket or a milk crate in there. You can secure that in place with the bungees. Obviously a little bit more support out of the Cloud 10C really just hugs and wraps around the body, holds you up nice. Uh, you know, with this seat, you don't really wanna lean into it as much as you want it to support you. So it's not about leaning back and being like a recumbent as opposed to being leaning a little bit forward over the bars there. Both of these boats are pretty quick through the water. You're not gonna have any issues with either one of these two models. There's not a wrong kayak. You're gonna have a great time in any boat. I remember having a great time surfing some boat wake at Whitefish Lake on the Skylark. I had an amazing time doing some river surfing with Dan Arbuckle in Lodi, California on that 12 foot frame seat Caribbean. In fact, I'm sitting in one of those frame seat chairs right now. As your paddle skills increase and your confidence gets better, you can always trade up. It's really about getting the kayak that you're going to want to paddle. The more frequently you're gonna use the kayak, that's the right kayak for you.